In part one of this tutorial, we will walk through two steps to prepare our SharePoint site for creation of a K2 application. In step one, we will add the K2 Appet app or K2 Black Pearl for SharePoint app, depending on your environment, to our SharePoint site and configure it, as well as add a K2 Worklist app part to our site's landing page. If you've already performed these tasks, feel free to skip ahead to step two, where we will create the expense claim SharePoint list, as well as the two SharePoint user groups used in this application for the approval steps. I'm going to assume you've created a SharePoint site in your environment that you can use to build this K2 app. If you haven't done so yet, take a moment to create the site under your own site collection. I've named my site How to K2, but feel free to use any name you choose. If you're in a shared environment, you may want to add something unique that distinguishes your site from others who run through this tutorial in the future. So go ahead and pause the video if you do need to create a site right here. Okay, now in order to create K2 applications, we need to add the K2 app to our site. So from our SharePoint site, click on Add Lists, Libraries, and Other Apps if you have that available on your page here or you can use the Add an App menu option from the Site Settings menu in the upper right to add a new app to the site. Under the Apps You Can Add heading, click on the K2 Black Pearl for SharePoint or K2 Appet for SharePoint app to add the K2 app to the site. Now the app that is available is going to depend on the version of K2 that you're using, but the process for this is going to be the same for both options. The next window you should see is the dialog box asking you to trust the K2 app. Now this box may be a little bit different depending on if you're using Appet or if you're using K2 Black Pearl for SharePoint. But again, go ahead and click the Trust It button. And after you do that, we should be directed back to our Site Contents page. And holding on here for a few seconds, we should see that the K2 Black Pearl for SharePoint or K2 Appet app for SharePoint will be added to the site. Okay, now that the app is ready to go, the next thing we need to do is configure it. Click on the icon for the new K2 app in order to open up the configuration wizard. On the first screen of the wizard, you need to point the K2 app to your K2 environment. When this screen appears, you should be able to leave the default value that is already entered in the field. There's a few things you do want to keep in mind here about this screen. This screen should only appear the first time you use the K2 app wizard, and it shouldn't appear again for future apps that you create on this particular site. Your value is also going to be different than the value shown on my screen and will be configured to point to your own K2 Black Pearl environment or K2 Appet environment. If no URL is displayed, you're going to need to request a new Appet environment or if you're using K2 Black Pearl, Check with your K2 administrator to see what the value should be for this box. If your value is filled in, go ahead and click Next. And from here, K2 is going to finish configuring the security settings for OAuth and claims, wire up the SharePoint service broker with the K2 server environment, and zip up the application settings used by K2 for integration with this particular SharePoint site. This may take a few seconds on my screen, so I'll pause the video. Great, once your Configuring K2 Server Settings screen displays that it has completed its tasks, you can go ahead and click Finish to move on. Now, back on the K2 for SharePoint screen, go ahead and click on the name of your site to return to the landing page of this site. Keep in mind, your site name may be a bit different than mine, as you see here. The next thing we're going to do is add the K2 Worklist app part to the landing page of this site. From the landing page, go ahead and click the Edit link in the toolbar on the upper right. And from the Edit ribbon menu at the top of the page, you can select the Insert tab, and then select the App Part button from the ribbon menu, and then the Available App Parts, go ahead and click K2 Work List. Next, make sure that the Add Part to drop-down list is set to Rich Content, if it isn't already, and go ahead and click Add. The K2 work list web part should be added to the middle of your site landing page at this point. From the toolbar at the top of the page, go ahead and click Save to finish editing the landing page for this site. 
Keep in mind, if you already have other K2 applications active in your K2 environment, you may see some of the tasks from this application show up there. That's all we need to do for step one, so let's do a quick review. Now that the K2 app is installed in your SharePoint site, you can start building K2 applications in this site. Note that the app has only been installed for this current site, so if you want to use the K2 for SharePoint app in any of your other SharePoint sites, you're going to need to repeat these steps over there to enable the K2 for SharePoint app. We also added the K2 Worklist web part to this site so that users can open their K2 tasks from the landing page. Adding the app part is optional, since your K2 applications will still work just fine if you decide not to add this Worklist web part to this site. Keep in mind that exposing the K2 Worklist somewhere is always a good idea so that users have a central place where they can see all their outstanding K2 tasks. In step two for this part of the workflow, you will create and configure the various SharePoint artifacts that will support this K2 application. These artifacts include a list called Expense Claims that will host the K2 application and store the Expense Claim header data. It will also include a SharePoint group called Expense Claim Approvers that will be used to select the user that must approve the expense claim. And finally, there will be a SharePoint group called Expense Claim Processing that we will create and this will be used to route tasks to the finance team for processing of approved expense claims. Let's begin with the Expense Claim Approver SharePoint group. From the landing page on your SharePoint site, open the Settings menu in the upper right of the page and select the Site Settings option. Once the page opens, select People and Groups under the User and Permissions section. Now, to add a new group, you have to select the Groups menu option on the left side menu, and then click the New button, and from there select the New Group option from the drop-down. Let's go ahead and name this group Expense Claim Approvers, and everything else here can be left to the default, so go ahead and click Create to move on when you're ready. In order for this to work, we need to add some users to the group now. Remember that these are the users who will approve new expense claims in your organization, and depending on the size of your organization, this may be managers, VPs, or finance users. When you're done, you should have at least one person in this group, but you can have as many as you like. Now, your values will be different to the values shown on my screen, although for testing purposes, you can add your own username to this list, which I'm just going to do here in my demo. Okay, now that that's done, Let's add one more SharePoint group to the site, the same way we just added the Approvers group. So go ahead and name this group Expense Claim Processing and save it back to SharePoint. Now we want to add users to this group like we just did for the Approvers group. And remember for this group, these are the users who will be processing expense claims, and this is usually members of your finance or HR teams. In this workflow, we will assign the task to all the members of this group, and the first person to open the task will be responsible for processing the expense claim. Your values will be different to the values shown on my screen again, and for testing purposes, you can add your own username to this list, which is again what I'm going to do here. Okay, now that the groups are created, we can move on to create the SharePoint list that will store the expense claim header information. To do this, in your SharePoint site, click on Add Lists, Libraries, and Other Apps if you can see that on your landing page, or open the Add an App page from the Settings menu in the upper right of the site page. This is going to be a custom list for this scenario, so select the Custom List app under Noteworthy, and then name it Expense Claim. When you're ready, go ahead and select Create. Now, there are a few advanced settings we're going to change here, so once your list is created, go to the List Settings for it under the List tab at the top of the page, then select Advanced Settings under the General Settings group. Once you're on the Advanced Settings page, you can go ahead and disable attachments since we don't need users hooking attachments to the Expense Claim header. We'll have another place for Expense Receipts, which we'll set up in a future step. You can disable the Make New Folder command, and also do not allow the use of Quick Edit in this list. 
When you're ready, go ahead and click OK to move on to the next phase of setting up the columns we'll need for this list. For the creation of columns, I'm going to transition through each column screen a little bit faster and just lay out the settings for each column. You can pause the video on each column as you create them based on the settings from my screen. Then we'll take a quick look at what the list should look like once all the columns are created. Now back on the settings page, under the columns section, select create column. And for the first column, we'll call it requester. And we want to select the person or group column type. Set it to yes for require that the column contains information. We don't want to allow multiple selections, so set that to no. Allow selection of people only and make sure enforce unique values is set to no. And the rest of the settings can be left to their defaults. Now I'll flip over to the approver column. For this column, go ahead and call it approver. And for the column type, select person or group. We do want to require that the column contains information, so mark that to yes. We don't need to enforce unique values, so you can set that to no. Also set allow multiple selections to no if it isn't already. And then allow selection of can be set to people only. And for this column, we want to choose from a SharePoint group. So select that and then set it to expense claim approvers group. The next column we're going to create is called submit date. And you want to make sure that this is set to date and time. Require that the column contains information can be set to no. Enforce unique values can also be set to no. Then for the date and time format, select date only. The display format can be set to standard and then default date should be set to none. This is going to be the date when the expense claim is submitted and it will be populated by an expression from the view. Our next column is going to be called Approval Date, so we want to set that as a date and time as well. Require that the column contains information, we can set that to No. Enforce Unique Values can also be set to No. Date and Time Format is also going to be set to Date Only. And Display Format can be set to Standard, along with a default date set to None. This is going to be the date when the expense claim is approved and it's going to be populated by the workflow. Our final date is going to be called process date, so this should be a date and time. Require that the column contains information can be set to no. Enforce unique values also set to no. With date and time format set to date only. Again, display format set to standard and then also default date set to none. This is going to be the date when the expense claim is processed and will be also populated by the workflow. Flipping over to the column called Total Amount, we want to set that to be a number and require that the column contains information that can be set to No. Enforce Unique Values set to No. We do want to set the number of decimal places for this column to be 2 since it's going to be a dollar amount. This is the total amount for the expense claim as a whole. We will use the decimal number format to avoid any calculation or formatting issues. Moving on to the status column, this is going to be a single line of text type. We don't want to require that the column contains information, so you can set that to no. And also, enforce unique values can be set to no. This column will be updated by the workflow with the latest status of the expense claim. To round out this list, we're going to do three more comments type columns. So the first column is going to be requester comments, and this is going to be set to multiple lines of text. Require that the column contains information can be set to no. The number of lines for editing, change that to the number four. Type of text to allowed, we can set that to plain text. And append changes to existing text can be set to no. This column will be used by requesters to fill in any comments that they would like about the expense claim. The next multiple lines of text column will be called Approver Comments. Require that the column contains information can be set to No. Number of lines for editing is going to be set to 4 again. Type of text to allow plain text. And append changes to existing text can be set to No. 
In our final comments column, we'll call this finance comments and set it to multiple lines of text. Require that the column contains information is going to be set to no. Also with the number of lines for editing set to four. The type of text to allow also plain text and also do not append changes to the existing text. You can set that to no. And that's the last column for this list, so I'll save it back to SharePoint. At this point, the list is complete. So in looking at my screen, your list should look something like this when you're done. If you want to follow this next quick step, I'm going to set up a new default view for this list so that users can only see the items where they are the requester or the approver. This will help to limit the data presented to users to only the data that they are interested in seeing. This will not affect the application, but it can be helpful from a data segregation and security perspective. We'll start this off by creating a new standard default view for the list called My Items under the list settings again. At this point, I'm going to pause the video for a minute to set up the fields on this view and also the order to preserve time. Okay, so if you're following along, your view should look like mine here on the screen. I've selected the following fields in this order, requester, approver, submit date, approval date, process date, total amount, status, and then down here at the bottom, the title field with link to item. So make sure you set this title column to be the first in the view. Lastly, I have also set up a filter for this view based on the person logged in, where requester is equal to me, or approver is equal to me. The me token tells SharePoint to filter based on the current user viewing the page. And that's it for step two of this tutorial, as well as part one, where we started out with the goal to prepare our SharePoint site for creating the K2 application that will drive the expense claim process. Before you begin part two, be sure that you have the K2 app it app installed on your site. You've created the two SharePoint groups to be used in the approval tasks of the workflow, and also that you've completed the creation of the expense claim custom list.